Before we begin, remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this with anyone who you think needs to hear this message. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can click the join button, become a member, and get access for free to the exercise performance course where I teach you to squat, bench, deadlift, shoulder press, do pull-ups, and dips. Not only that, but you will also get the audiobook of the book of Puck, narrated by me, and also the exclusive podcast for members, The Coffee Cast, where we do weekly Q&As. Now that we've had that out of the way, let's begin. And begin we shall. Hello, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. How has everybody been? Let's see, I want to do this. Of course, professional podcasting. We always do things the right time at the right moments. You got to excuse my professionalism here. Let's see. (laughs) There we go. There we go. Because we are doing the coffee cast afterwards. And if you don't know what the coffee cast is, the coffee cast is for members where we do weekly Q&As and hang out a bit and play Minecraft because I got back to my farm. There we go. And done. So how have you guys been? I've been doing well. Hey, Smolt. Hello, Smolt. I haven't seen you before. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying the channel. I wonder, how did you find me? How did you find my YouTube channel? I always find that interesting. CZ is here. Is this Jack Bucket on Head Napier? Well, funny you should mention that. Actually, I am not. I am not, actually. Um, Because, and funny you should mention that. A lot of people, hey, Sat, hello, good to see you again, too. Lurking for a long time, Smalt says. Well, clearly I've got kept your attention for a long period of time, so let's hope I can keep it. Um, Bucket on the head. And I've made this comparison before. The manosphere and the fitness space are very much alike, where it can be very dogmatic, where it's like, this worked for me, so it will work for you. Be like me, it worked for me. It's like, look, do I want the same thing as you? Of course you want the same thing as me. What are you, a beta male, a scrawny manlet? And it's like, ah. Those things all depend on the individual. And how I got to that, and I've said it before, and I will say it again. I mean, there are plenty of podcasts where I've said this. Hey, Donald J. DeMarco. Good to see you. Caught another live. What up, y'all? Well, doing well. How about you? Um, Where was I? So my physical therapist called me today. He and I chat every now and then. Uh, he's pretty based. He's pretty based. And... Uh, I mentioned a while back to him, uh, we were talking about diets and things like that. And I've said before, I'm a big proponent of Stan Efferding's advice of what's the best diet, the one that you can follow. And I mentioned, well, I've been doing carnivore diet for years now. Now, I'm not going to sit here and be a zealot where it's like carnivore diet is the best thing ever. It's like, well, for me, it was. Hey, and I'm your Nachbar. Germany, Europe is different than the US when it comes to the SMP. Yeah, it is. It very much is. But I'm dating an American, so. <laughs> uh, whoa. Is that? Is that Alabama man himself? I Alabama. wanted to. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about getting into Legos and wanted some advice. <laughs> Well, I'll let you know. I will have you know, sir, that Lego has been a better investment than the S&P last year. Just saying. I have no doubt. Weirdly last, last year was a bad year. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I did gloat a bit because there were guys in this space where it's like NFTs and all of a sudden turned out this year all your NFTs are worthless. All the Lego yeah. sets went up. I'm like, I am not better than this. Who's laughing now? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty wild. Pretty much it is. So 
you've done carnivore diet for a while, haven't you? Uh, yeah, off and on, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was uh just before you came on, I was mentioning my physical therapist called me and he's like, "Look, I want change. I want change." He said, "I've been feeling bloated. I've been feeling low energy." And you mentioned that carnivore diet. It's like, how much meat do I need to do a day? And blah blah. blah. And all I could think of was, all depends on what you want. Like there are guidelines, but the way I do it shouldn't be the way you do it. And I found that interesting because like he is a physical therapist. He's a professional as well. And he should kind of know that or could kind of know that. There's that word yeah. again, should. Like could kind of know that where it's like, you know that there is no cookie cutter to diet. Right. So I, I was think... a bit surprised about that. Go ahead. Well, I mean, I, I think like the, th the three things that I've I've noticed about it is inflammation, energy, and um, you know just overall strength. And but I don't mean strength just in terms of lifting or anything. I, I mean strength in terms of like mindset and stuff. I think you just feel better mm -hmm. on a on a mostly. On a mostly meat diet, it's funny because when I was looking at when I first looked into that in 2000 and uh, early 2019, I was uh, I had been I had been hitting vegetables really hard and protein less, animal protein less, and then red meat less, and I kept I kept feeling worse and worse and worse and worse. Digestion mm -hmm. that's that's the other thing. And, and so, and so I did like an entire month, just meat only meat and eggs and water, you know, mm -hmm. and, and immediately, like I had, I had these joint problems, you know, cause I'm getting old. I, you know, I had these joint problems that were showing up. They mostly went away, um, like reduced by 90% of stiffness and pain and stuff like that. And it was just like across the board, all the stuff that was, starting to nag at me a little bit as an old guy uh, started going away, you know? And it was like, so after a month of that, I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is the shit. This is for me. Mm -hmm. No, he was figuring that out too. Like I've been doing my, my fiber and I've been doing my vegetables and fruit and I just can't get the energy anymore. You mentioned a carnivore diet. Like, yeah, but I can't tell you exactly what or how to do it when uh, comparing to me, like I eat one meal a day, I eat 500 grams of steak, which is one pound of steak, five eggs and some spinach and a whole bottle of rolled milk all in all at once. <laughs> it's like, yeah. be like me, it worked for me. I can guarantee you, you have to be a certain level of mad man <laughs> to be able to down that within 15 minutes. I've done the OMAD thing. I, you know, I don't, I don't do it as rural. I do two meals a day. Um, but there are days when I'll do just one. And, you know, the thing I like about it is, is that, you know, and I'm not, and I'm not, you may find this hard to believe, but I'm not, you know, I don't go in on like some kind of program for me. It was like, I read up on it, you know, Sean Baker and PD Mangan and all those guys. And, and, and I got to the point where it was like, because I'd already been thinking, I was like, you know, people, you know, cavemen weren't, you know, weighing their food on scales. <laughs> no, <laughs> they were they were eating when they could and eating as much as they could when they could. And, you know, you, you realize that, you know, as much as possible, that was meat, um, you know, because fruit and vegetables aren't available all year long if you're in a cold climate. But meat is meat's always there if you can get it. And so and so for me, it was just like, yeah, I'm going to eat mostly meat. And then, you know, if I want a freaking, you know, carrot, you know, sometimes just want a carrot, I'll eat a carrot. You know, I'm not going to I'm not a Nazi about it. <laughs> but, you know, it's like 80 to 90 percent of everything I eat is 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 beef and then a little bit of fish and sometimes chicken and pork. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> And it's no. and it's and it's simple because I don't have to buy a lot of different stuff when I go to the grocery store, right? I can just buy, you know, 
as much meat as I want, throw it in the freezer and I've always got food and it's simple to prepare. And I don't like fussing with cooking and stuff a lot. So, you know, you throw a steak on the grill or in the iron skillet or, you know, a big hamburger or something and that's it. Mm, no, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. And you just go for the things that you enjoy. I told him the same thing. It's like, look, I just go to the Aldi and get my steaks there. Some people uh, think that's heresy because like, that's not, that's not grass fed and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, but look, Aldi has pretty good steaks. Like if you prepare those, there's like zero water coming out. Yeah. And all the other grocery stores all have those, those watery steaks. It's like, well, never mind then. Well, you know, that that's interesting you bring that up because I when I first started doing this, I was about a month in and I and I committed myself. I'm like, I'm gonna do this for three months and see what happens, you know. And it ends up becoming sort of an elimination diet because you know that the only thing you're eating mostly is meat and eggs. Mm -hmm. And you know, digestion, everything improved. That stuff about fiber, you know, I'd been I'd you know, my digestion actually improved when I started getting rid of fiber. I haven't you been know. constipated in ages. Right. And so, you know, so I think I'll, you know, I don't know whether all that's bullshit or not, but all I know is my own experience. But, you know, I went, so I went and I was like, okay, well, you know, grass fed beef is the stuff. So I went and bought a bunch of grass fed beef, brought it home. And this was mostly ground, grass fed ground beef. Um, and then I started cooking it and eating it and it tasted like grass to me. And I was like, I, you know, Maybe it's maybe it's better. I don't know, but I sure don't like it. So I just try to get, you know, stuff that's not been injected full of hormones, but I don't really care if it's grass fed because that it's got a bad to me. It, it doesn't taste good. Mm, I never had it like I've had black Angus. Black Angus is I find it better than Wagyu in all honesty. I don't know. I don't know if you've had Wagyu ever. I, I only had a small yeah. cube once, but I prefer Black Angus. I I love that. I like that way more. Way more. I mean, to me, to me, the Wagyu that I've had was, you know, and this wasn't even, you know, this wasn't like genuine Japanese Wagyu. That this was that American Wagyu. So, you know, that you know, if you're gonna, every everybody everybody has their uh, their hierarchy, but. You know, to me, there wasn't anything if you're if you're eating it like extremely rare, it's really good. But like, you know, I just I go for medium rare on everything. And, you know, the regular old the regular old high, you know, higher end steaks I get from the grocery store, you know, are fine. You know, I just I don't I don't I don't get the I don't get the really cheap stuff because if it because I'm because I don't because I am kind of especially as I get older which probably doesn't matter at my age now, but I, I'm kind of squeamish about hormones and antibiotics and all that crap. I like, I do, I do like to keep things as simple and clean as possible. So. Oh yeah, I can imagine. But like, other than the whole diet stuff, since mostly my rants about a topic only lasts for 20 minutes and then I'm done because I will run through them. How have you been? I'm living the dream, brother. What can I say? I mean, crypto's been doing well. It start it's starting to wake up. You know, mm -hmm. I started I started teaching my you know crypto basics class again, and had and finally had some interest again because for most of last year there there weren't that many people interested in it um, no. because it, the market was so down and there was so much fud out there. But um, you know, and my and my class doesn't. You know, I teach it every couple of months. My class doesn't, you know, it's not a, here's how you get rich in crypto. It's a, it's a very basic beginners, you know, I'm not familiar with crypto. I don't know how to move it around safely. I don't know how to store it safely. So I teach people how to do that so that, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it's like basic driver's ed for crypto. sort of. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's my whole fitness thing as well. It's mostly the basics. And that's what I yeah. enjoy the most. I really enjoy that the most, like the, the, the guys who don't know where to begin, but really want to begin. And they've got their head filled with so much garbage where it's like, oh, I need to train six times a week and I need to weigh all my food and I need to calculate every calorie and blah, blah, blah. It's like, chill, chill, motherfucker. You don't. Yeah. You really don't. 
You just need to go three times per week, focus on the basics and do the basics right. No worries. And then like I've had clients tell me like, really, is that all I need to do? Like, yeah, but, but you need to stay consistent. Right. All you need to do. It's kind of like investing like time in the market instead instead of timing the market. Mm -hmm. Like it's like you said, if people were it would would join that class last year, they would have had way more benefit than they would have had to join this year. Right. Right. But yeah, yeah it's not a hype. Mm -hmm. No, and and you know, back to the fitness thing. You know, I, I used to hit the gym really hard. And, you know, by the time I hit about 54, I was just hurting myself all the time. And so I, I scaled back on on like everything I did. I simplified it. I only go twice a week. and But I do do stuff like, you know, I've got some land. And so, you know, I, I work on, you know, clearing the land chopping wood, splitting wood, stuff like that, cutting trees down. And so, you know, I try to, I try to get as much, uh, of my exercise as possible from doing stuff like that right now and, mm -hmm. and, and do a lot of body weight stuff because like I, I injured my shoulder so badly I couldn't do, I'm just now getting to where I can do pull-ups again. It's been two years Damn. because yeah, because you know, because my shoulder just got, you know, I just tore it. I tore it bad. And uh, so, you know, so there's stuff like that, that, you know, you got to, especially as you start getting older, you know, I, I shudder to think what kind of shape I'd be in if I hadn't been lifting all this time. Mm, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy about that, too, that I started lifting early. It's like, OK, that that habit has been set in stone. It's almost like brushing teeth. Like I go two to three times a week now anyway, but at least I go. It's a lot more than other people can say. Yeah. I mean, and you got some mean arms on you. It's like Rolo's got the, uh, Rolo's got the like, uh, workout at the gym arms. You've got those like son, you can be the world champion, but I can still kick your ass kind of arms. <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> nope. You know, that's, it's funny. That's purely a genetic thing because as, as soon as I hit puberty and started lifting weights and I did, like, I was like 12, 13 when I started lifting first and it's like, you know, three weeks and my biceps and my triceps and, you know, my delts and stuff, they just, it's like somebody inflated them with a, you know, with a, with an air pump. It was just, that's just luck of the draw right there. You know, nice. so I can, I can work, I can, you know, the rest of my body is not the same. My legs kind of are, but I can work out for, you know, I can lay off for a year, work out for three months and my butt at some point in the, I mean, work out for three weeks and some point in that three weeks, my biceps just go bang. And, uh, you know, I, it'd be interesting to see if I, if that would work now though, if I laid off a year at my age, you know, cause I'm sure that, I'm sure that, you know, getting older has something to do with, uh, you know, that not being as, you know, as prominent anymore or something. True. Like, if I may ask, you don't need to answer this. Like, have you ever thought of TRT? I tried it, actually. Um, and I didn't like it. I tried it very briefly. And I just, I got to thinking, because my, my T is a little bit low uh, at this point. That was one of the motivators for, you know, getting on carnivore and, and, lifting less frequently, but more intensely. And like all the other stuff they say to do for, you know, to raise your testosterone naturally that science says doesn't work. I don't know whether it works or not, but I just, I know that I haven't had aside from uh, a little bit of brain fog here and there, I haven't had any negative effects of, of, you know, my tea dropping and I started doing it. I just, I didn't, it just, I didn't feel like me and you know, maybe that's, maybe that's, maybe that's a good thing and I should have kept with it, but I just, I didn't <laughs> want to be, I, I, I came to this point and I'm not saying this is right for everybody, but you know, because I'm in my fifties, late fifties now, um, I just decided that, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be healthy, but whatever happens happens. I didn't want to be dependent on, on, you know, no, shots 
whatever what you mean like i've been i've been uh what was it i've been offered and i'm like no it's like first of all i'm only 33 it's like i am way too young to touch that in my humble opinion and second of all i can still function properly in in all manner in all aspects of life so no i've yeah. known guys who who were on it at a young age and now like especially with social media at such a hype where you see all these youngsters these teenagers even going on sarms and shit and it's like look this yeah. is like enjoy enjoy it while it lasts kid because a improper use of that stuff there's a reason bodybuilders don't die old right well and you know plus you know i've managed to get through life so far with you know i mean i i don't take i don't take medicines for really anything and every now and then you know there may be something that i need but like i'm not one i don't i don't take heart pills i don't take blood pressure medicine i don't i don't do any of that and i i just i just don't want to live like that i don't and i and i don't i don't believe that people really know what the long term effects of any of that stuff is or not and i think that if you're not like you know 100 pounds overweight with you know blood pressure you know 200 over <laughs> over 120 or something crazy like that then just, you know, be healthy, drink water, you know, do all the, do all the cliches, yeah. get some exercise in, be healthy. And, and I just, if I go out, I'm going to go out, you know, doing things the way I, I like doing them. And, you know, I do want to say that, you know, one of the reasons why I think that I don't think that TRT is that great a thing for me is I think that I never really had it measured. And if I did, I don't remember what it was, but I think I've been pretty high testosterone my whole life. And to be honest, when my when I could tell it was it was dropping a little, it was kind of a relief for me because I I, I was always very, um, very aggressive, you know, very confrontational. And I learned how to manage it and, you know, be polite and be social, be professional and all that stuff. But there was that, you know, I was horny 24 hours a day for 30 <laughs> years. Right. You know. And, I just uh, can't imagine you being aggressive. You're always like so chill, <laughs> yeah. except in your writing. And your writing, you're pretty savage. <laughs> yeah, but you know, but it's it's like, you know, I, I to me it was kind of relief when I when I realized, you know, just a few years ago that that I could tell something was dropping, and I, I got the blood tests, and they're like, yeah, it's not it's not critical, but it's definitely down, and. Uh, you know, but apparently from what I've been reading, I still have more testosterone than your average 20 year old. So oh, no. <laughs> you know, it's I all mean, relative. I never got mine tested because I did want it to, but Dutch healthcare system, like the, the American liberals always go like, oh, the European health system. Seriously, if you want a goddamn normal blood test, the questioning you need to go through is less than the Gestapo. So fuck it. I don't give a shit anymore. Never mind. It's like, can I get out a blood test? But sir, why would you want one? Uh, to see my measurements, you know, and uh, prevention. Yeah. Why uh, wouldn't you, know? you want to know? Yeah. Uh, why wouldn't I want to know? It's like, right. yeah, but sir, like, are you ill? I'm like, no. Uh, do you have any other, uh, like, uh, what, what do you call that? Like, do you have any uh, shortcomings? With it? I'm like, no. Yeah, well, uh, we got to have a reason for you to get a blood test. I'm like, lady, what the hell am I paying you for if I can't get a goddamn blood test? The insurance is forced here. So what am right. I paying for? What are you forcing me for if I can't use it? Oh, 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 I'll see what I can do. I'm like, you're goddamn right. And then it well, was just a hassle. It's like, that's the, that's the drawback, you know, and, and our our healthcare system has you know major problems as well, but that's that's one of the drawbacks with with what you're under is that you're just you're just a bean in a jar, and you know unless unless you're turning a funny color or you know sprouting an extra you know sprouting an extra arm or something, then they don't you know you're you're 
you're not as important as everybody else who's got these other problems. Whereas here, we're also beans in a jar, but we could, but we're jumping beans. We can get out of the jar if we want to, if mm-hmm. we have the money, if we can pay, if we can talk somebody into it. You know, we we still have options, even though they're bad ones, but they're still options. And you know, that's that's kind of the that's kind of the boat we're in. But it's it's ridiculous to me. And you know, I I, I think technology is going to solve that because I think eventually, you know, there are home blood test kits. There's all these new apps and gadgets they're making for your phone now where you can scan, you know, get your vitals on your phone. I think probably 10 years from now, all that basic stuff, you're probably going to be able to get through some kind of home, you know, test kit. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's maybe there's quality. Maybe it's a good quality product and maybe it's not. But I think that's what's I think that's what's coming. A lot of the stuff that you can do it yourself, I think you're going to be able to. Yeah, no, you're you're one hundred percent right. What was I about to say? Oh yeah, because like my physical therapist asked me about that as well. Like, since you got on the diet, like, did you get a blood test? I'm like, well, I tried, and they they were being difficult, so I stopped. Like, I don't. Aren't you wondering? I'm like, well, I'm not dead yet, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll just keep going. Well, I mean, and there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff. You know, and I'm and I'm no and I'm no expert. I'm not claiming to be. I, everything that I know, I've learned just in relation to making my own decisions about myself. So I should make that clear. But you know what I've learned about both T, like TRT, cholesterol, stuff like that. I mean, there, there's target ranges, but then there's also a lot of you know swing in either direction, depending on the rest of you, how you're made, how, what your makeup is, what your genetics are. And I think there are so many things that are, you know, like what's hot, what's high or low T for one guy may not be high or low for another guy in pragmatic terms, in terms of, you know, can he function? Can he have sex? Can he do all this other stuff? And, and, you know, so, you know, I, I take, I take a lot of those kinds of ideal targets with a grain of salt because, you know, ultimately, I mean, I've gotten to the point where I just, I just measure things by how sex, how successful am I with it in my own life? And am I able to live the life I want? And if I am, you know, I'm not going to worry about anything else. No, same here. Like as soon, like, can I still keep moving? It's like, good. Can I still keep breathing? Good. Am I uh, conscious? Good. I was like, that's all I care about. Can I still lift? Do I still have to drive to lift? Things like that. Like, okay, good enough for me. Good enough for me. How's the uh, how's the editing going? It's good. I've got a I've got a little break right now. I I had three. This is I was telling somebody on another live stream. This has been like, I mean, I, I just do it as an avocation, as a part time thing. It's not anything that you know I do. Although I have done it full time in the past. Right now, it's just something to make extra money for crypto and bourbon, you know, and cigars really. But, (laughs) but this year it's like, is I've done it for the past three years, got back into it. And it's like the work this year has doubled over the past two years combined. So I've actually been putting in almost full-time hours, which I'm, I'm not that happy about because, you know, I don't want to work that much anymore, but, uh, (laughs) But, I mean, but you, know, you, it's, you it's, get to decide the price. Yeah, I mean, I get to. I mean, I, and and a lot of people, you know, a lot of people that that ping me about possibly working on something, you know, a lot of them don't follow through either because they either, you know, they either don't like me or or what I do. They don't like the pricing, which is often what it is, and uh, so that helps a lot. And and plus, you know, the people I do work with, I you know, I, I only work with people that. I think I can help improve their, you know, their book and that, you know, and that they're people that I want to work with. So like a lot of people that I don't want to work with, I'll just price them so high that, you know, if they pay me fine, I'm, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting a lot more. If, if they don't, then that's fine. I, I, 10K I an hour. save myself the hassle, you know, um, but I like, you know, I've, I've, I've edited a lot of red pill guys books. At this point, I like doing that because it's a, you know, as you know, I don't, you know, I don't really 
muck around in that in that in that space you know as a content creator i just i just happen to be friends with a lot of folks who do um but i like doing that because i can kind of kind of one step removed i can help people with uh you know get their material out there which i think helps people so mm -hmm. uh, you know i just wrapped up i just wrapped up editing ryan stone's uh latest book that's going to be out soon and uh that's a real good one yeah oh i'm looking forward to that i am looking forward to that because mostly a lot of those concepts i still can't explain and if i can't explain it i know i don't understand it yeah and i hope that with his book i can finally be able to explain them therefore actually understand them i, I really like working with ryan I, I i've always liked him i've always liked his approach to the material and um, liked his live streams and the way he just, you know, he, he doesn't, he doesn't go for simple, easy, you know, cookie cutter answers. He really tries to, he, he puts in a lot of effort to understand, you know, human psychology and people's behavior and, and, you know, take all that and, and present it in a way that, you know, makes sense to guys in the current situation and is helpful for, you know them making decisions so i you know i like that's one of the reasons why i like i still like doing the editing and stuff is because it's you know it's a way for me to you know help with that just a little bit without you know without you know because i you know because I, I i even if i wanted to do that which i don't you know i couldn't do it i couldn't do that better than ryan you know and i don't have the interest in doing it better than ryan and rollo and some of those guys and uh you know i'd, I'd rather be off you know mm -hmm. no, playing I my guitar it. and shit yeah i know what you mean i uh, it was amazing you put red flags or a green light in a song it's like nice i loved uh what was it adopt a shoe from portland yeah the birkenstocks <laughs> of portland i love that <laughs> I well red, i mean you know red red flags or green lights came from you right yep yeah and you know I, but i didn't hear it from you i heard it from rob mm -hmm. so you know i was you know rob started mentioning you know started using that phrase one day and i thought you know that'd make a good song mm -hmm. red flags are a green light uh, but there are also red lights which could be added to that but that's a whole different topic well you know but i mean like when you look at twitter and what they say is a red flag i go kind of like no like, mate, no, no. There are plenty of people with tattoos and piercings and whatever, and they're perfectly fine people. Uh, women with tattoos. Like, mate, I, I have met women with tattoos, maybe one who were, like, a, an absolute godsend, and I've met people without tattoos who were, like, scorch of hell. So... I don't know, man. It, it's all up to experience and assume don't obsess is where it comes down to. Well, I mean, it, it comes back to the, you know, the, one of the, one of the tools in the red pill toolbox is, you know, all, all, all people are basically the same. All women are basically the same. You can trust women to be women. And my experience has been that, you know, the absolute worst people I've known or dealt with have been, have had very few red flags, at least on the surface, you know, mm -hmm. go to church, no tattoos, normal hair, dress modestly, all that stuff. None of that means anything until you've actually gotten to know somebody for an extended period of time and see, you know, what their regular behavior is, how they behave when challenged, how they behave in a crisis, um, you know, all that kind of stuff how they behave when those typical triggers of extreme behavior come up and are they able to handle them or not? And I think, I think most don't handle that very well and it doesn't matter what is on their skin. And it also, it's also, you know, it's also relative as well because, uh, you know, I'm not looking to get married. I'm not even looking for a long-term relationship, even though I am kind of in one, but you know, if I, you know, I dated plenty of women with tats and piercings and stuff. And, you know, if, if the whole point was just to uh, spend a weekend with them and then never see them again, who really cares? So, you know, it's, it's like, 
Yeah, it's, it, you got to you got to map you got to map your requirements to your goal. Mm, real quick, speaking of that, Cappy's new book just dropped. Oh yeah, yeah. He he just he just released it. A world without men: an analysis of an old female economy. Oh dear. Oh my. Yeah, that should be fun. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, if you want to get Cappy's new book, go get it here. Here's the link. He just dropped it. He just posted it on uh, on Twitter. Not when was this? A couple of minutes ago. Wow. Yeah, two minutes ago. I just checked Twitter. I, I checked the DMs. He's like, "Hey, if you're interested, you can go get it." I'm like, sure, sure, you old fart. Let me know when you do the audio book. Oh, no, yeah, no, if you want to do the audio, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Just tell me in time. <laughs> Well, if he's an old fart, what am I? Because I'm even older than him. Yeah, but like old fart is a personality, not a demographic. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, what was it? It's a mindset, not a demographic. Same as Boomer. Same as yeah. Boomer. Yeah. So didn't you just get back from, weren't you in recently in America? No, not yet. America uh, was recently here. I, I knew about that. I, 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 but you are you are coming here again. Yeah. Okay. Soon. As it's looking, I, uh, the date and things like that. Uh, I have a date. I'm keeping everything under the radar a bit. Otherwise, people are jumping me like, "Oh my God, he's here! Can you come here? Can you come here?" And I'm like, "Can I land first, yeah. please?" <laughs> The last time you were here, what was your what was your biggest? Did you did you have any misconceptions about America that were busted when you actually came here? The people were a lot less fat. <laughs> no, okay. seriously, like it was it was pretty much the same as in the Netherlands. Um, I didn't get stabbed or shot, which was nice. But we were in Philadelphia, so I don't know how bad it is there. It wasn't that bad. There's there's not as much green as there is here. Like here, you you walk outside and there's trees everywhere and like grass plain uh, grass plains parks whatever. And I I found uh, what I saw from Philly. It was uh, a lot of concrete, a lot of concrete. Not bad. It's not a bad thing, but not a whole lot of nature. That's how the cities tend to be, but if you go if you go to the more rural states, or if you like, if you came to Alabama, you you know it's green everywhere. Pretty um, white too, isn't it? It's a uh, well, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, you know, it depends on what part of the state you're in. I have to do it. <laughs> it depends on what part of the state you're in. Yeah, we get a lot of snow. <laughs> oh, I just had to get that in there. No. Take your shots. We can. We we've we've taken much worse over the years. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I've seen that. I've seen that. No, but even Tori mentioned that. Like, oh my god, like green. I'm like, yeah, I can, I can make these hiking routes every morning. Well, I, th uh, I think you know what you said about Philly. I haven't been there in a while, but Philly is kind of. It's not as bad as some of the West Coast cities and some of the other East Coast cities, but it's also. I mean, it's a pretty high crime city, depending on, again, depending on what part of the city you're in. So, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure Vince, I'm, I'm sure Vince took it upon himself to keep you oh, safe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, like Vince is a very uh, genuine, caring, giving man. He really is. Like his hospitality knows no bounds. Absolutely. What a friendly, giving person Vince is. That's why he and Rob are, you know, so much in love. Yeah, that is true. I mean, I, I'm very happy, and their marriage will last forever. <laughs> Rob, on the other hand, can be a bit of a grouch when you offer him coffee at eight in the morning instead of a beer. <laughs> yeah, he never, was, never, never so offer pissed. Rob a non-alcoholic drink. That's for he sure. was so pissed till this day. He breaks that up. <laughs> Like you fucking asshole, kicking down my door at 8 a.m. Like, what do you mean kicking down your door? I just knocked to say I had coffee. Ah, man, man, I thought the fucking police was on there. It's like, okay, sure. <laughs> Me bringing like three giant black coffees from Dunkin' Donuts. I'm like, well, last time I do that, it's like I sit there on the couch. <laughs> I 
<laughs> seriously. So we were in that Airbnb, like, uh, you have the couch here, TV in front of me, and next to the TV was the stairs. And I sit there watching TV, and all of a sudden, Rob comes downstairs. I look at him, like, good morning. Look straight at me. Good morning. One straight line walks to the fridge, <laughs> opens up, bu- opens a butt light. Whoopa. It's like, what the hell? Well, I think there's also that uh, difference between, uh, you know, American oh. selfishness and individualism and European sociability because, you know, every, mm-hmm. every, every European I've ever known, when they stay with other people, like, for instance, we had some people from Sweden stay with us uh, years, years ago. And, uh, I mean, they brought their own bath towels because they didn't want to they didn't want to put us out you know in terms of of anything you know which is which is bizarre to me but they but they like you know if a european stays in your house they come in as a like this is a conscious event like there's a there's i'm going to behave a certain way because i'm a guest in this person's house whereas americans we're just like yeah leave us alone we'll do whatever we want and you know <laughs> if you don't like it uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like the Americans, all the Americans I met are just very kind people, very friendly and kind people. So we're far, not we're not even, nearly as bad as we're made out to be. No, but even in the airport, even at the airport, just very friendly, kind, easy to get along with, just nice all around. Like way better than the French. Fuck the French. No was there was there was there anything that that any misconceptions that were negative, like you thought it was going to be better than it was? The Baconator. (laughs) From Wendy's? Yes. That was very disappointing, America. (laughs) I am disappointed. Utterly. I thought like, Wendy's Baconator. Here we go. This, This large mammoth of the burger. This behemoth. What do I get? This propped up small brick it's like the fuck well yeah but you you like you like mcdonald's wraps don't you yeah they're okay i prefer I mean, burger king's burgers I, I was like you know when i you know back to the carnivore thing when i started doing that and i started just cooking more at home and it was it was not because of of any other thing i mean i was trying to avoid seed oils for better for worse whatever you know whether that has an impact or not i think it probably does at least if you're eating that stuff on a regular basis but just when i got more obsessed with cooking as simply and cleanly as possible when i the next time i went out and got some fast food it was like it made it it was not good you know it was like 10 years ago and i said the baconator yeah it's just fine and then you know if i if i had one now i'd be like this this is not anywhere near as good as what as what I make at home. So mm-hmm. yeah. no, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I mean, fast food in general is just what if you if you ever ate a lot of it and then got off of it, then you know. You... I I still like Domino's and uh, Burger King a lot, and apparently fried sushi exists. Yeah, I've seen that. It's like. It's like, okay, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Kate's in the chat. I wonder if she eats fried sushi. I'll bet she doesn't, but maybe she does. Ah, uh, she probably does every now and then. I've never had it. I've never had yeah. it. Like, there's a sushi place around the corner, and uh, Tori and I got the menu, and she's like, have you ever tried fried sushi? I'm like, what? She's like, yeah. Fried sushi. I'm like, no. But, yeah, but you live here. The, the place is right next door. I'm like, yeah, but barely order there <laughs> interesting it's like, oh, but that's good that is some good shit that is, is some good yeah and warm sushi with like a crisp uh cover it's like yeah warm yeah but the whole sushi. point of the whole point of sushi is you're eating it raw doesn't that cook it hmm. a bit a bit but like i said it's good i just Ready i like that Maybe I'll try it sometime. I'm I like sushi, but I I, I pretty much only go for uh, tuna rolls. That's all I'll eat. So mm. yeah, I like the salmon rolls. 
more than the tuna? I'm afraid of salmon. Why? Because I, I just, you know, because, I mean, tuna are deep water pelagic fish. They're always moving. They're, you know, deep water is relatively, you know, cold and clean. And and salmon, yeah, they, they come from cold water, but, you know, they spend part of their time in fresh water. And I'm just too... I'm too uh, I'm too skittish about parasites and stuff like that. I just can't I can't go for the raw salmon. I'll just do tuna, you know. I mean, not not that not that's not that's one of those things where you know that's a Nick thing. That's not you know I'm not saying that that's even accurate. I'm just saying that's that's my perception, and you know I don't have enough of a desire to eat raw salmon, so it doesn't matter. I just you know I'm happy with tuna. Mm-hmm. No, I get what you mean. I just don't like the taste of tuna that much. I prefer the taste of salmon. See, I, I love the taste of raw tuna. Yeah, huh? uh, it's not bad. It's just if I had to pick, you know, gun to the head, I'd go for yeah. salmon, even if it killed me. Well, I mean, that's you know, there you go. That's you know, <laughs> the hill all, I will all, die on. We all have our own formulas for mm. you know what makes what makes yeah. for happiness. Wow. I mean, what works for you? So what makes a good beef Wellington then? Well, the crust has to be flaky, not soggy. You know, the, the meat has to be cooked, you know, no more than medium rare. You know, it's got to hang together well. So, and you know, if, if a woman can do that, if a woman can produce a, it doesn't have to be perfect. If she can produce a decent beef Wellington, you know, that shows she's got, you know, she's committed to doing something that's relatively difficult and that doesn't really benefit her aside from the extent to which it benefits you. So she'll cook you a beef Wellington. What more do you need to know about her? Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, well, uh, I want to wrap this one up. Where can people find you? I don't want to be found. Ah, that's a good thing. If, if they can, if they, if they want to bad enough, they can find me. Fair, fair point. Guys, hit the like, subscribe if you haven't. Comment down below your thoughts of this show. And if you want to support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the join button and tune into the coffee cast, which I will be doing within like five to 10 minutes after this. I put the link to it in the chat so you can go there. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Oh, sorry for not uploading a video yesterday. I've been kind of busy. Uh, I'll get on it ASAP. My apologies. Cheers. Boom.